Welcome to Mysteries, Myths, and Legends. I'm Taylor. I'm Savannah. And welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy two, 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 two three. Happy <laughs> two, 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 two. <laughs> yeah. If you're listening on, I don't know if you said too many twos, but if you're listening on the day that this drops, the date is currently two, 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 two three. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, you know, that's in the spiritual world. Probably an important day because the um, angel number, 222, um, in case you didn't know, like, there's this whole thing called numerology and basically, like, people believe that numbers are special, right? Or, like, have mm-hmm. some kind of a meaning behind them or whatever. Yeah. So, I looked up what the 222 means because, you know, that's today. So, if you're listening when it drops. Um, so it says that the meaning of 222, it's like a sign of balance and harmony in your relationships. So, oh, I so, love that. I know, I know. And it says seeing 222 may be a reminder to focus on bringing balance and harmony to your romantic and platonic relationships. And, yeah. Yeah. So hmm. it's pretty cool. So I don't know. If okay, it resonates well, with you, I guess take that. Yeah. And if you don't believe in numbers, then sorry. Two, <laughs> just two, don't two. believe in just numbers. Numbers. Don't they're not real. <laughs> yeah. I I believe in numbers, I think. <laughs> I, I do too. You know, we stand numbers here on this on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so friendly reminder, if you will, please go rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Mm-hmm. Por favor. Yes, please. We love to read them. Um, so do we want to talk about, you know, the stuff that's been going on? Okay. Um, yeah. The little aliens. Yeah. Guys, there's a lot of stuff going on these days, um, you know, in our world. So we're not going to touch on most of it, but the one thing we must address, <laughs> um, it's gotta be like these UFOs that mm-hmm. are just being shot down left and right. Um, yeah. so I, from my knowledge, there was a weather balloon, quote unquote, um, that floated, like it was supposed to be like a a spy balloon, whatever that means, that floated from Montana to like South Carolina and burst. Oh, really? Yeah. So it like, yeah. And they're they're saying it's like a Chinese spy balloon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's true or even what that means or why we would let it float from Montana to South Carolina because that's like a long, that's a big trip. Um, yeah, I don't have any answers, but apparently some of the um, balloon was actually like washing up on the beach here. So that was pretty cool. Oh, hmm. I didn't see it, but um, hmm. yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what that was about. Um, so that's weird. And then there was a UFO um, that was like shot down, which means, you know, unidentified flying object. It, does, it doesn't necessarily mean alien. Um, and they said that that too was a weather balloon. Now in one episode 100, I did cover the Roswell incident, which is uh-huh. like all completely focused on like this UFO that people were seeing. And then they're claiming that it's a, a weather balloon. See, I just, I think it's crazy that this is happening so soon. After, right now. Yeah. So soon after you covered so, Roswell. <laughs> honestly, I think what happened was the aliens they heard the podcast, right? And they were like, okay, yeah. so this is coming back to light. Let's let's uh-huh. try this again, guys. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, so aliens, like if you're if you're listening, we're with you. Um I guess I would say keep trying, but I don't know. Maybe come talk to me personally, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah. So I don't really know what's going on with these balloons or UFOs or what I believe about them. But it's definitely weird. Um I mean maybe that's they for sure. will Maybe there will be an um like an update uh, yeah, between so. now and like the time this comes out because we are we're recording ahead of time. It is for sure. the it's February sixteenth right now. Yeah. So I mean maybe maybe this will be out of the news cycle by then. Yeah. <laughs> or, sorry. or there will be another one. Maybe, <laughs> exactly. You know, so we'll find out. And apparently no so I do know that after the Alaska one there was another one in Canada. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. And I was listening to another podcast earlier this morning, actually, that was talking about this too. And they said that before, like the big, like quote unquote spy Chinese weather balloon, the, like the first one that I was talking about, 
Um, apparently this has been going on for like the past six months and they just haven't been saying it in the media until now. Six months. So I don't know what's going on. Um, huh. so, you know, I guess we'll keep you guys updated on that. <laughs> if we find out anything else. Yeah. Um, oh it's definitely God. weird though. Uh huh. So I don't know. But okay. other than that, I don't really think I have any other intro topics. Do you? No. Um, so we can we can get it started. Um, so this week we're doing something a little bit different. Special episode, guys. Yeah. So I um, actually went on Reddit and found a thread that was... Um, somebody was asking, what are some cryptid slash ghost slash unexplained stories you'd be willing to share? So we're going to we're going to read some for you guys. Yes, I'm so excited to do some Reddit stories. I've been wanting to do some Reddit stories. So, yeah, we are staying all like all of our stories are coming from this one subreddit, um, Mm -hmm. which will be linked below. But if you guys want us to do any other subreddits, you know, email us the link. Yeah. Yeah. Just let us know. Or, you know, um another podcast that we love they do listener ep- episodes so maybe maybe you guys could send in some stories that you have if you want us to read them oh yeah we'll read your stories um if you guys have any spooky weird interesting interactions um yeah let us know mm-hmm. so yeah okay so let's get started on the first one let's do it <clears throat> so Uh, One afternoon, I was at work. I walked past a room with a window in the door and automatically glanced in the window. There was a woman standing in the room, except there were only three people in the building and the other two were in the office behind me. I took a couple steps, realized what I had just seen, and backed up quickly, but um, but by the time I got back to the window, the room was empty. There was only one door when I opened it. The room was empty. Um, at the same building, a co-worker was telling me that she was in the office right around the corner from that same room. She couldn't see the door, but she could see the shadow of the door on the floor as it slowly opened and closed. She was the, one, she was the only one in the building at the time, and she refused to check. I arrived about an hour later and she asked me to check the door and it was still locked i had worked there about three years and every single one of us had stories we heard voices in empty rooms once we were sitting in the office and we heard somebody breathing in an empty corner oh my god creepy absolutely Um, not (laughs) yeah it was common to be in one of those rooms and think somebody had just walked in the room only to look up and find that the room was empty except for you. I had one manager who scoffed at all of our stories. She did not believe us when we told her there was something fairly benign but creepy in the building. We were sitting in the office. Um, she scoffed loudly and said, if, there, if there's anything here, um, I'll prove it. Or, no, sorry, I read that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> she said, if there's anything in here, prove it. Um, we all held our breath, kind of nervous. A bit scared, but also curious. And just about the time my manager was getting that look on her face that said, Ha, told you so. Um, something was thrown out in the hallway. Yo. Yikes. Um, it took several minutes to work up the courage before going to check and finding that a book that had normally been set on a bookshelf near the front door had somehow gone from that bookshelf around the corner and halfway down the hallway. Mm-mm. The manager never talked about it and quit shortly after oh. that. Oh <laughs> I've since quit also, but last I heard, they were still hearing voices and seeing shadows in the building. Yo. Oh, my God. Would you quit a job because the building was haunted? No, that would make me want to stay at the job, I think. I mean, depending on, like, how scary it was. Um, yeah. Like like this. I mean, like it this, seems though, like... Like, he's kind of chill. He's just, like, throwing books. And only, honestly, because she provoked him. Yeah. Well, there's so, that, and then also, like, just the feeling that someone's behind you. Yeah, I feel like I wouldn't mind a workplace being haunted because, like, I get to leave, you know? Like, I'd want to experience... I mean, I mean just honestly, only because I have this podcast. Like, yeah. just for the stories. So then, yeah, so then you can tell your story. Exactly. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. for no other reason, though. 
That's true. Um, Just, also, I do yeah. have to say, like, the employee who was like, I'm not checking behind that door is absolutely me. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> me too. Me too. So I'd just be ignoring it. Yeah, I'd be like, nope. I didn't mm-hmm. see that coming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think the building I work in is haunted. It's... Mm-mm. No. Um, no, mine's definitely not either. It's, like, way too new. Way too oh, new. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which, I mean, that's chill, too. I, I honestly get more, like... See, I feel like workplaces are more scary because I feel like I'm about to get abducted, like, in the parking lot when I leave, like, late at night and it's, like, dark outside, like, in the winter. No, yes. That's what I'm more afraid of (laughs) than the ghost. Yeah. No, (laughs) I agree with that because, like, outside at night, it's definitely scary. Horrifying. (laughs) Like, literally, life as a woman, I guess, but... Yeah. Horrifying. And especially since, like, my building, like, we lock all the doors. Like, I have a key fob to get in. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, it seems safer Mm-hmm. And, like, a ghost. I don't know. I just feel like a ghost isn't going to hurt me. Exactly. Same. Hopefully. So. Hopefully. Maybe we should knock on some wood. Yeah. I did. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I guess we'll do a little popcorn game if you want to. And I'll read yes. a story for us. Yeah. Okay. Let's get right on into it. So, okay. This story is not involving me. It was actually from what my mom when she was a little kid. So I've only heard the story from my grandma who likes to tell me um, things like this when I visit her. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. My grandma was traveling with my mom and her three younger siblings. One of them was a baby and the others were toddlers, you know, four or five. So very young kids. Of course, handling three hyper kids and one baby on an airplane isn't fun. And my grandma was beyond exhausted by the time they took their seats. Um, my grandma chose a back row on the flight, sitting with the two youngest, while my mom sat in the other row with her sister. Things quieted down for a bit when they took off, but as time went on, my mom and her siblings grew more restless. They were whining, complaining, crying, um, and all my grandma wanted to do was just sleep and literally forget about it all. Me. <laughs> Literally yeah, me. no, literally every day. <laughs> literally me without the three children. Um, yeah, like imagine us with that. Like, <laughs> absolutely oh my God. not. And as a grandma, <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, anyways, so just as my grandma is about to lose it, a man sitting behind her taps her shoulder and my grandma turns to look at him. He frowns, noticing how tired she is and asks if she if she would like any help calming down her crazy kids. Of course, my grandma is so done, so she quickly agrees. Side note, nowadays, I don't think people would be so quick to hand over their babies, but this is way back in the day when strangers were a lot more chill with each other, so I guess that explains that. <laughs> yeah, see, that part of it is, like, creepy Yeah. regardless of the rest of the yeah. story. <laughs> yeah, so this story was, like, written in 2020, but apparently it happened, like, when his mom was, like, a kid, so, like, right. a long time ago. Right. So, yeah. Um, anyway, my grandma reads quietly. Obviously, a wave of relief washing over her as the man hands my mom and her sibling and her sisters coloring books and quiets on the baby by holding her little interesting toy like over the seat. He had somehow hung it up over the seat. For the rest of the plane ride, everything was quiet. My grandma says it was the most quiet, actually, that she had ever heard my mom since she was born. So... (laughs) Okay. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, the plane lands, and my grandma thanks the man and starts getting my mom and her siblings ready to get off the plane. Of course, she's super excited to introduce this man that she had befriended on the flight to my grandpa and tell him how he saved her from a hell of a flight. My grandpa gets off the plane with everyone and... my No, sorry. My grandma gets off the plane with everyone and meets up with my grandpa in the lobby. She proceeds to excitedly tell him all the details and that he should wait just a few more minutes to meet the man. After all, the man was behind them and he would be one of the last people getting off the plane because they were both like, you know, sitting in the back of the plane. Um, 10 minutes go by, 15 minutes go by, 20 minutes go by. This whole time they've been watching people get off the plane, um, but the man never showed up. Um, my grandma was incredibly puzzled by this because... Like, how could he have possibly disappeared when they got off before him? Oh, no. And they had been watching this whole time. Oh, no. Um, I think I know where this is going. (laughs) 
so <laughs> yeah so she did actually the grandma did get his name but he didn't like share it in the story so um my grandma worried that something might have happened to him went up to the crew members um who had a list of all the people on the flight and she asked for his name um only to be given the response sorry ma'am there's a no that man's name on this list um so (laughs) to this day um nobody quite knows for sure who this man really was or where he could have gone um, but my grandma and I like to think that he was some sort of guardian angel or spirit sent down to help her in a time of need. Oh my God. Cute. But also kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, definitely both. Oh my God. Like he was just helping, but ah, that's scary. And like on a plane, I feel like on a plane, I feel like a ghost on a plane is crazy. Yeah. No, it totally is. Because like you just, I don't know. I think of ghosts as being like grounded individuals that. oh you know? that too <laughs> grounded i mean there's a floor on a plane <laughs> i guess you're right but like they're really up there yo maybe they were a flight attendant yeah yeah or maybe they life. died like on a plane you know yeah <laughs> i weird. mean it's horrible but <gasps> or oh my god oh my god oh my god i just thought of something what, what? if what if one of the passengers was carrying ashes oh so na- okay that's crazy and like what if it was like her grandpa or something or their grandpa yeah so then we're just they envisioning wouldn't... this whole story uh, for them okay <laughs> so did you say it was an old man yeah it was an older man okay um maybe the person like if they actually were holding ashes or something they either didn't see see the ghost or didn't recognize them or they were like no there's no way you know yeah they, they, and they probably didn't see them because they were in the very very back True, true, true. So true. unless they were sitting yeah. in the very back, they would have never seen them. That's okay, crazy. That's, okay, mean, that's what I'm, I'm going with and believing. So yeah, no, that's what I'm going with. <laughs> that wow, that wow, that actually just gave me chills. That's crazy, crazy, crazy. Ah, wow, this episode is fun. Okay, see that made me think like you know how people carry around ashes of people in like a necklace. Yeah, yeah. I never really thought about them like fo- actually following them around but like that made me think like what if that is a thing if that's like, a real true thing. that's so crazy because that would kind of change like the way like ghosts might work too yeah and if you split it up between the people that you love and exactly. you get to choose mm-hmm. <gasps> that's really crazy oh wow. my gosh we're really Wait, did we just figure something out <laughs> yeah we're really figuring <laughs> things out <laughs> right now love that for us okay okay i'll um gonna popcorn back and and Let's read my story now pop, pop. so this is another i think we'll, we'll just get into it and figure out what what happened okay um so um when i was seven years old my grandma another grandma story um my grandma was in the hospital dying sad mm. At the time, my family was strapped for cash and my mom was pregnant, so only my dad went to California where she lived um, to see her before she died. The day that she died, we got a phone call from her uh, wanting to talk to each of us saying how much she loved us. A few hours later, we got a call from family members saying that she had passed away. And when we told them what had uh that we had just received a call from her a few hours prior everybody in was in disbelief saying that she had been laying unconscious in the hospital bed all day and she could have never called yet alone been able to articulate her thoughts to us to this day we have no idea how she called us and i don't think we ever will what the absolute heck is going on yeah that one That that one shook me because what (laughs) yo i have heard of some stuff like that happening before but nothing to that extreme yeah like that's what that is so that gave me the goosebumps for real because that is crazy Ah! how the heck did she do that like she just used all of her energy that she had left oh that's so that breaks my heart she's Uh, like unconscious and she made it through the phone wave somehow Wow. Yeah, I don't know how that science works, but... I don't know. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, that one... I mean, that one's kind of nice, though. Like, No, that's all of sweet. These, all of these have been pretty nice mm, so far. <laughs> I will. 
we might be taking a, sw- a short oh. a sharp curve with this next one okay um <laughs> yeah let's just how about we just get into it how how why don't we okay um yeah. okay one night i was watching the conjuring at my house obviously one of my favorite movies and obviously as well savannah has never seen it so yeah sorry Boo. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, anybody else who has seen that movie knows that's super scary. So the fact that this person's already watching it, like you, the scary vibes are already there. So just know that. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was watching The Conjuring at home with my little sister when we heard someone putting a key into our front door and opening it. Um, we were sitting in the living room next to a sliding door that was very close to the front door. So we both heard it clearly. Um, now this didn't alarm us since we knew that our dad had recently gone to get some stuff from the store. So we just both assumed that he had just got home. Mm -hmm. Um, dad, you're back already? Question mark. Um, I casually asked. There was no response. Dad, I asked again, thinking that maybe he didn't hear me the first time. But again, silence. At this point, I get the feeling that something isn't quite right, and I could tell by the look on my sister's face that she was a little bit nervous as well. Um, But I will note that up to this point, she had spent the evening rolling her eyes at the horror movie cliches, and she rarely gets scared. So this made me worry a little bit. So the fact that they were watching The Conjuring and she wasn't scared at The Conjuring, but is now scared of this, you know. Yeah, that's a little concerning. That's a little worryful. Um, okay, so we looked at each other for a moment, wondering what we should do before we started hearing a few more scattering sounds from, like, right outside the sliding door that's right behind them. Oh, no. Um, I don't like that. In this moment, I was frozen in fear. I tried one more time in a louder but shakier voice. Dad... Is that you? In my head, I'm like, please respond, please respond, please respond, but nothing but silence. Now, at this point, I'm freaking out, and I literally jumped off the couch. My sister also abruptly gets up and starts rapidly walking towards the other end of the room, which eventually leads into the kitchen area. Um, She later told me that (laughs) this was because she was planning on running to the kitchen and grabbing a knife. (laughs) <laughs> i mean good idea honestly <laughs> like really good idea um hopefully it's not a ghost like you know because i don't know if you can True. like knife a ghost but um she had this horrified look on her face that i had never seen her have before we looked at each other at in nervous silence for what seemed like forever i didn't really know what to do and i didn't really want to make any other sounds i finally decided to walk up to the sliding door immediate no 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 turn around um i began opening it as slowly as i possibly could peering into the darkness no i know i literally became the idiot who investigates the unknown creepy noise without anything to protect myself with i know (laughs) that was like in parentheses (laughs) yeah yeah Uh, at least you know that you're wrong for that (laughs) Uh (laughs) no i can just picture it it's like the little girl goes up to the the thing that you don't want to go look exactly. behind the curtain Ex- or something exactly. and like there's music playing in the background mm-hmm. and... oh, I, i'm seeing it all in my head for sure and then something pops out and mm-hmm. like murders her mm-hmm. let's hope that's not the end of this story <laughs> obviously not as they're writing <laughs> on ghost. reddit she's a ghost so, writing it <laughs> she's ghost writing it <laughs> that's so funny um okay so they're looking out the door Um, When the door was finally open wide enough, I poked my head out and scanned the corridor, preparing for the worst. To my surprise, there was nobody there. But what was more strange was that the front door was still completely shut. We never heard the door close. Um, Me and my sister were both obviously extremely relieved because now we were almost certain that there, like, was not an intruder in the house. Um, Which I don't really know how that makes sense. Uh-huh. Well, because it, I guess they just assumed that, like, they thought it was open and it really wasn't. Oh, see, I was thinking the other way, like, that he might have locked himself in there with them. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess they didn't think that. So. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully they didn't. Um, So, anyway, after this, I immediately go up to ask my mom, who apparently was situated in her bedroom at the other end of the house for the night and didn't want to get up. Um. So I asked her if me it, as a mom. Literally, literally me as a mom. <laughs> like y'all go do whatever you want to watch your scary little movies. I'm going to my room. Um so I immediately go ask my mom if it was her and whether 
or not she had heard or noticed anything that was going on. She told me that she thought she had heard um, my dad come home because she kept hearing somebody open the front door. Um, oh, my God. From the other side no. of the house. <gasps> So around half an hour later, which kind of felt like an eternity at the time, (laughs) um, as we were still quite shaken up from the incident, my dad finally arrived home and confirmed that he had never came home earlier that night. To this day, me and my family still have no idea what happened that night. Oh my god, that's scary because like that could be like a little creepy person. Like it really, it could, it really could be a person. It could be a ghost. I mean, that could be really anything. And I also don't like the fact that they're watching the Conjuring movie because if you guys don't know, I'm sure that we've talked about it on the podcast before, but um, like the people who worked on that movie, which is also scary because it was filmed here in Wilmington, um, they, they say it's like a cursed movie that them working on the movie, like really bad things happened to like all the actors and stuff. Okay. See, that makes me not want to watch it even more. <laughs> like, um... <laughs> See, for me, that makes me want to watch it even more. Oh, my gosh. Because I'm crazy. But, <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, that also could play a part in it. Like, what if it's, like, this conjuring curse, like, from the movie? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't like that one bit. And I really hope they thoroughly checked the house and, like, made sure nobody was in there. Yeah. Because oh that's my, my first thought, honestly. That, oh, my God. Ugh. Yeah, I hate that. I See, that's the scariest kind of thing for me because it's like i i get extra scared at night Mm -hmm. (laughs) like during the day when it's daylight outside like i don't really get scared oh i get scared oh well i don't know i i get scared at night and even like my family has been like they like judge me almost for closing all my blinds at night what and i'm just like well not really but like i'm just like i open most of them during the day and then I go around and close them all before it gets dark. Oh uh, yeah, me too. And they're too. like, why are you... I don't know. No, see... But I'm like, I don't want something out there to, like, see me. Exactly. Or... <laughs> no, see, here's my <laughs> predicament. I feel like this is, like, a predicament with, like, older generations, like, older than... People older than us. They be leaving their blinds open. And that's why in all the horror movies, that's why y'all are getting stalked. Because they can see right through your windows. Yeah. Like, I have blackout curtains. Like, and the second that the sun yeah. is down, like, the sun set could still be beautiful in the sky. I'm turning the blinds. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're getting the curtains being pulled. Like, you're not looking at my mean, house. My back door is just, like, glass. So, like, that one. Mm-hmm. If there isn't really, yeah. I don't really have anything to go over that. See, and see what fine. I did, because my front door is kind of like that, too. Mm-hmm. Um, And I got this, like, glass. It's, like, see-through still, but it has, like, rainbows, like, mm-hmm. triangles on it. So, you, it's kind of, like, it's semi-see-through. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. See, I'm not too worried about the back, though. No, for sure. You know? For sure. And, There's nobody back um, there. And I can put my lights on out back. Exactly. So then I can see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah, anyways, like... These girls who are, like, just here and tapping and stuff, like, that is this. Oh, my God. I would no. be terrified. Uh-uh. Also, ew. Okay. Before we move on. hmm I, Savannah, I don't even know if I've told you this story. Oh I can't. God. I can't remember. Oh, my God. Um, we're but it happened the other day. Life. Real life. Like, real life, this story happened to me the other day. Um, so, I was sitting in my room. I, I, me and my roommate had decided, we had just decided we were going to go to bed for the night and she had somebody coming over. So I knew somebody was coming over and I was sitting at my desk, um, like taking off my makeup. Right. And at least you, Savannah, you know, the layout of my house. Yeah, um, yeah. so I'm sitting in my room. My door is like open though, like crack. Cause yeah. me and my roommate are still talking and like, we're just both getting ready for bed. So, but we know somebody's coming over. Okay. So I hear the front door open. And I'm just like, oh, okay, the person's here, whatever. Um, Like, 10 minutes go by, my door's open. Like, I would be able to hear them walk down the hallway because they have to pass my room to get to my roommate's room. Right. And I'm like, hmm. And, like, my roommate's still in her room. And so, like, five, five, ten minutes later, I'm like, did you hear the door open earlier? And I was like, is, you know, so-and-so here? And she was like, no. Like, I have to go pick him up. And I was like... (gasps) No. What? And so she she runs she runs like to the door. My front door is wide open. <gasps> and nobody was here. Oh my god. 
Yeah, and we have cameras. We have security. We have, like, a security system. Nothing set off the cameras. Like, and so here's the thing. My front door, there's a clear, like, a clear glass front door and then, like, a real front door. Yeah. Um, and so, like, if you were coming into my house from the outside, you would have to open the glass front door, which would set off the outside camera. But that, that door didn't open. So, like, it wasn't the wind because the wind would have had to open the other door to open the main door. Mm -hmm, if that mm -hmm. makes sense so still unexplained (laughs) to this day we had to do a thorough check of the house because i was very much so like somebody's in this house um but nobody was in the house so i don't know what happened there oh my god i would be creeped out for the rest of the night oh i was oh i was (laughs) and yeah so and honestly i can't even lie it was so traumatic that i put it out of my memory until i just read that story and it re-triggered me (laughs) So, oh no, you're gonna be scared tonight too. <laughs> yeah, so but it scary. hasn't happened since, though. It hasn't happened since. So, I'm like hoping it really was like some kind of weird wind thing going on. That's what I just have to tell myself that it was because, right, right, I'm a little too scared. Yeah, like, to think about could, anything else. I don't know. I don't know. It could have been some sort of random, yeah, maybe thing. I don't but the know. thing is, the thing is that's weird about it is that like because I really would think it was like wind or like the heat turning on or whatever. But the thing is, when you open the door, you have to, the, like, the, um, what is it called? The doorknob is kind of broken. And so when you turn it, like, when you physically turn it, it makes this very specific sound. So I heard, like, the the actual physical doorknob turn. Like, as if somebody turned the door open. Oh, my God. So, like, that's yeah. why I'm, like, I don't know what it was. So, you know, we don't know. Hopefully there will not, never be an update on that and it'll never happen again. Yeah, I really hope so. Um, but uh, let us know. Yeah, I will. <laughs> I will. So anyways, moving along. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, I guess. <laughs> okay. Let's let's go on to a, a new story. Um, this is another short one. But, um, but yeah, let's get into it. So... Okay, um, I feel like it's, I feel so weird starting these, because I'm, like, going from, like, just talking, like, normal I know. to, like... You're, like, I, and I'm, like, I'm not really talking yeah. about me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but I kind of love it. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, so, I was walking home from college one afternoon. It's about a two-mile walk from home and college. Um, I'm on the outskirts of town, of the town center, and entering a busy neighborhood, and everything seems normal until I start getting a creepy feeling, like I was being watched or something. So Mm -hmm. I look around. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) So I look around, and what do I find? Literally every person looking at me and watching me as I go past them. Are you kidding me? (gasps) That's actually my worst nightmare. I'm not even kidding. I would die. Um, even the people driving were looking at me as they went past. Like, there was one guy who was turning the corner to come onto the road I was about to cross, and he was legit leaning over his seat, staring at me as, as he drive, he drove around the corner. Mm -mm, Like, I've had this nightmare. (laughs) Um, happened the entire way home, but hasn't happened since. Um, was super freaked out. Didn't tell my family or friends because they would think I'm crazy. <laughs> and then um, the last sentence, last sentence is, and y'all out here saying this world ain't a simulation. <laughs> okay, see, that's what I was going to say is that that literally happens in this movie, The Truman Show, which I'm not Oh, even... I was just going to say, it, it reminds me of The Truman You've Show. You've actually yeah. seen The Truman Show? Oh, yeah, I love that movie. See, I was going to say, I know you haven't seen it, but... <laughs> No, I love the Truman Show. Are okay, you well, me? okay, Savannah, you can't be shocked that I'm shocked that you've seen a movie. I um, okay, Taylor. I if it was like a a horror movie, you would be right on the nose. But this is like I mean an '80s movie or in, '90s. In my opinion, I think the Truman Show is honestly a scary horror movie. It is not. It's I don't like know. it's horrifying it's, to think about. I think it's, like, interesting to think about. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely both. If you haven't seen The Truman Show, guys, please go watch it. Yeah, I don't... Jim I mean, Carrey. I don't know what year it came out. Probably the 90s, right? Yeah, probably the 90s. I can look it but up. I but I see, like, yeah, movies thing, in that era, like, I've watched... Yeah. And I love Jim Carrey, so... That's facts. It came out in 1998. Okay, okay. But yeah, it's so good. But I, 
I used to watch it when I was really young too and I didn't know what it was called for a while so I had to like re-find it and I, I watched it again recently and yeah but anyways it um basically I mean if you don't want to spoil it fast forward 15 seconds but yeah sorry this he, is literally 25 years old <laughs> like y'all should have watched it by now yeah honestly but he basically like the whole um his whole world is a tv show where he is filmed 24 7 and yeah. he's the and only one who's not an actor yeah, in he's his world, the basically. only person who doesn't know that he's the star of the truman show it's so crazy because like the producers adopted a kid and then they like put him in this world and he grew he grew up like that and what's so crazy is that like if you really think about it like that kind of actually came true now with like these like family vloggers <gasps> yeah that's they crazy. predicted the future it's crazy so yeah, definitely go watch that movie. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Also, side note that like, would you watch the Truman Show if it was a real show? Most definitely. I watch if, all really bad TV shows. Now, if I true. knew, if I knew that he didn't know, and like that he kind of like, I wouldn't. I don't think I would watch it. No, I think that's the whole thing. Everybody knows he doesn't know because like <sighs> that's bad. Well, that's not that's not um ethically right. And then, so no. <laughs> and you you remember like at the end of the movie like there's this whole like you see the people watching the show too and they're all cheering for him at the end they're like finally he got out like mm -hmm. we're rooting for him because like now we're now I'm thinking about like parasocial relationships like yeah. that they they've watched him yeah, they for know all this him. time they know him yeah and they're like good for him like he's leaving and wow so like I feel like I'd be one of those people like. I'd be like, okay, I'm protesting that this is on, but also I want to watch. <laughs> yeah. That's me with a lot of stuff, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> no, and also there are protesters in the show, in the movie, too. Yeah, there are. Wow. They, yeah, yeah, anyways. The writers of that movie really hit the nail on the head. That's what I'll say. So, yeah. you know, this is not sponsored by The Truman Show, but definitely go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how would it be sponsored? <laughs> <laughs> it just, it's, we're really plugging them here. Okay, um, it, it is one of my top movies. So it's, it's also one of my favorite movies. So, yeah. I mean, that's This is actually now the Truman Show podcast. Um, yeah. And I honestly do also think that I say I feel like I'm in the Truman Show probably every single day of my life. See, yeah, like the feeling of being watched like that is so crazy. And I think mm -hmm. when I was younger, like, um, I don't do it as much now. But like when I was younger, I'd be like so like anxious that it was happening to me and like you know yeah. you watch your every move because you yeah. think people are watching you but like, like what was going on with this man and his story like no that's what, yeah who, what were they looking at like did he just like have something on top of his car or something you know well no this person was walking oh well maybe he had something on, like on his face you know what i'm saying or like i don't know i'm just trying to think of something like why people would be looking at him like that i know like why would people look at you Ew. Oh, I really don't like that. Mm -mm. Not at all. Not yeah. at like, all. Like that. Ha okay. Like, obviously, we just talked about the Tr Truman Show for so long. But like this happening in real life, like to me, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what no. I would do. That does seem like it's a simulation. That's what I'm saying. Because you know? it's like they're all glitching out and like looking at me. Ew. Like, no, 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 no. I really don't I like don't it. Know. I really don't like it at all. And you know what else you're not going to like? This what? next story I have for you. Okay. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> um, so this one actually has a title. Um, and it's titled The Tall Man. So. Ooh, mm, I already don't like it. Tough. Yeah. So um, before reading this, please know that I have recently been diagnosed as schizophrenic earlier this year, which I'm sure will explain some of this, or at least I hope. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. So, when I was a small child, um, around four to seven, I slept walk a lot. Um, it still happens, actually. Up, and it happened a lot more up until college, but not as frequently as it did. Um, specifically during that free year, three year period between ages four and seven. Um, for the most part, from at least what I'm told, I would more or less wander into my parents' room mumbling and speaking barely audible gibberish um and then they would send me back to bed and i would go back to sleep and then have no memory of the event until the tall man arrived oh, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> horrifying i woke up 
or at least I felt like I woke up one night and there he was standing in the corner of my room, staring at me with his white, lifeless eyes. He had teeth like a pian- like piano keys, hundreds of them. He was taller than the height of the room itself, so he was having to hunch over. Everything about him came to like this sickly angle. His hair was like a little black mop top of unhinged scribbles. His black coat flowed across my bedroom floor like a rug, and his giant bruised bony knuckles rested on my floor. Okay, (laughs) this is giving sleep paralysis demon. That's exactly what this is giving. I hate it, though. I hate it. Like, he, Uh ew, ew. Um, He was perfectly still staring at me, just staring at me right into my soul. So, you know, that's good. (laughs) That's really good. Um, I made the routine trip to my mom's bedside and told her, the tall man is in my room. This, of course, <laughs> oh my girl, God. Uh, this is why this is, add that to the list of why I can't have kids. If my kid ever came up to me in the middle of the night and said the tall man is in my room. Oh, my baby, God. we're gone. We're dipping in that. Moment. I'd say I'm gone. I'd say I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. And <laughs> I'm going back to sleep. No, because then like what if the tall man comes in your room? Like, I'm getting out. I don't know. I feel like I would just ignore it because I'd be like, what, I, mean, I don't know what you're talking like about. Like, you're going to, like, what are you going to say? Go back to bed, like, and send him back in there with the tall well, man? Well, maybe, maybe I'd be like, okay, sleep in here. <laughs> okay. You know? Well, me, on the other hand, I would literally leave immediately and never return. Um. Okay. Like, being realistic, would you actually I would definitely <sighs> in the middle of the night? Like, Yeah. Like, if my young four-year-old son came up to me and said that there was a tall man in his room. um, Would you go check first? Absolutely, I'm not going to check. I'm not <laughs> going to check. I'm not stepping foot in that room. Uh-huh, I would either uh-huh. lock myself in my bedroom or literally go get a hotel. Like, it would really depend on if I was by myself See, or not. If somebody else was there, then I would feel a little bit more safe. But I don't know. Like, little kids are, like... They just be saying stuff sometimes, like yeah. the tall man. What the hell? What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, no, you're right. <laughs> I guess you're right. I guess you're right. Maybe, maybe not. But I don't know. I just feel like kids can. I yeah. feel like kids can see. I guess it depends. Well, like... let me tell you what this mom did. Okay, okay. Um. So, you know, he walked up to his mom's bed and was like, "The tall man is in my room." Um, and of course, at first she was horrified, so she rushed into my room. And, of course, found nothing. Um, so, yeah, she ended up sending him back to bed, and she went back to bed. Um, but this went on for about a year. Once every few weeks, I'd have an episode where I saw, or what I'm now re- realizing was some kind of hallucination caused by undiagnosed schizophrenia, um, was the tall man. He was standing there, unmoving, just staring at me. Eventually, I was taken to a child psychologist and asked to draw him. I must have been either eight or nine years old. Um, And I remember really taking my time with the illustration because for whatever reason, it was really important to me that they got to see what I saw. I remember my mother being really upset and the doctor was visibly concerned when they saw the picture. The tall man eventually went away and I haven't seen him since. Um, Unfortunately, though, these days I see way worse. Um, so that's the end of the story, which is not a great ending. I'm so sorry (laughs) for that. I can't imagine having schizophrenia, but like, that's actually horrifying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Genuinely. Yeah. Because that's like real, real. Like the tall man might not be real in this case, but like it's real to this person. So yeah, that's horrifying. Hmm. Horrifying. Well, I mean, at least they... Um, got to the bottom of it. That's facts. Sort yeah, of. that's facts. Yeah. At least, at least it actually wasn't a ghost. But I don't know. Maybe it would have been better. I don't know. But yeah, at least I figured it out. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, do you have another one for us, Savannah? Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, all right. This one is from somebody called Froggy the Frog. Oh, Froggy so the Frog! I Shout just out. I would, yeah. Um, okay, so I got home from school one day and decided to play a game on my computer. During intermission in the game, I would talk in a group chat with a couple of my friends. 
Um, we were telling jokes and making each other laugh until I needed to use the restroom. I told them I would be right back and left my phone on the desk and didn't turn it off. When I returned, I noticed that some of the letters were being pressed, even though no one was in the room with me. Um, it wasn't a word that was typed, but random letters with the at symbol spacing them out. Ew. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. Um, to me, it didn't mean anything, so I asked my friends if they uh, thought it meant something, but they were startled by it and didn't know what it meant either. I thought it was strange, but I decided to ignore it. Later that night, when I decided to go to bed, I turned off my lamp and got under the sheets. Um, my cat, Portia, was, <laughs> was by me sound asleep. A few moments later, I heard what sounded like footsteps slowly creepy, uh, creeping through the hallway to my bedroom. Oh, no, 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 no. Suddenly, they stopped right outside my doorway. Mm -mm. I glanced up and expected to see my brother... But no one was in sight. From her dead sleep, Portia bolted up, stood at the end of my bed, and stared into the hallway. <gasps> oh Absolutely not. I was confused since she had never done that before. I tried to get her back to her normal spot on my bed, but she wouldn't budge. Um, I even put her, I put my hand in front of her face, but she kept trying to peer over it. She eventually sat back down and went to bed. Since then, I haven't had any other experiences like that, and I still wonder if there was something trying to contact me that night. Yo. I think Portia saved your life, fam. <laughs> what did it do? Just like, it was a warning? Like, like, I'm here to protect you. I don't know. Like, I kind of don't. I feel like the fact that they said it was like creepily walking up to their door, like, was not there for good. Yeah. Or, I mean. But I don't know. It maybe. could be like. Like, oh, going... you're sleeping. Sorry, let me be quiet. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or maybe it was, like, a grandmother figure, like, walking up to, like, look and check in. That's true. That's still so creepy, but, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Or it could be a creepy thing trying to get you. Could be. Regardless, Portia saved your life. Um, and yeah, I, I just have to know that. Mm -hmm. um, I really cats, do. Cats are our... our um, <laughs> I just, I don't know what I just said. Um, <laughs> cats are our saviors. Honestly. They really are. I was going to ask, um, have, have you had any weird experience, like, experiences like that with your new cat? Well, um, not really. She does just like, she'll just be like laying there and then suddenly get up and run away. So it's like, <laughs> it's not really like I, that uncommon for I that. I feel like that's so. like the crackhead energy of her just being a little oh, kid. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 definitely. So maybe when she grows out of that, um, it'll be more strange for her to just like get up and run around. Yeah, definitely. And that's that when I'll we'll take know. it as warning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But <laughs> but no, not not so far. Well, that's honestly good. Good for you. Yeah, good for you and little yeah. eggplant parmy. Uh huh. Um. Okay. Well, I will read one final story for us today. I guess. Okay. So let's get right on into it. <clears throat> This is a secondhand story from my deceased dad. He was out hunting in a tree stand. He was alone, but he did eventually had a friend come check on him later in the day. Anyway, at some point, he went away from the stand to go on the ground just to get a good distance away to see if he could see anything. Um, he says, hold on. Oh, man, I lost my spot. <laughs> Okay, always. okay. Okay, <laughs> I know. We always have to have every, at least one. Every single time. It's just, you know, so hard. Um, anyways, as he's on the ground looking around, he remembers seeing some stuff that could have possibly been something that he wanted, you know, to hunt. I don't know what animal he was hunting, but, mm -hmm. you know. Um, then, as he's looking at it, it seems to be not an animal. Um, as he described it to me, at, what, at first, he thought might have been a deer or something that was hurt. He, As he got closer to it, he realized that it was a ghost of a woman um, that had, like, appeared one second and gone the next, but that she had no legs. Oh. Oh. Um, so that's interesting. Um, and apparently, when... Um, he saw this woman, this ghost, with no legs. She spoke to him. 
and told him not to shoot a moose or elk, um, the two things that he would have been out there hunting for, Mm -hmm. um, or that he would die soon before his son, who is the person writing the story. So we'll get back to, in a minute, um, whether or not he survives this death date, okay? But um, anyways, so we're back into the woods. Mm -hmm. She told him to pick up his rifle and shoot it three times in the air and that his friend would come and pick him up. Then she moved into a tree and disappeared. Now, okay. can you just imagine a legless ghost moving into a tree? Because that's kind of hard for me to picture. She's just like floating. Right. <laughs> so, so crazy. Mm-hmm. So sure enough, my dad shot. His friend noticed almost immediately um, and got confused on why he was on the ground and not in the deer stand. Um, later, though, in the day, my dad did eventually end up shooting either at a moose or an elk, um, but it almost seemed like his bullets curved or purposefully missed the animals, um, but it didn't seem to have anything to do with the wind or his aim. His Mm -hmm. friend actually did land a kill, um, but that day, like, like, for some reason, his dad couldn't even though he was like a good aim and so this person's hypothesis is that some sort of like forest guardian energy um was what this woman was and that she was trying to like protect the area and the animals so isn't that crazy oh and i was yeah, like oh. it really could have been i really probably was and so if you're curious if the dad survived the death date He did actually survive the one-year death date, even though he did shoot. He did not kill the animal, but he did, you know, he has since passed. But, so, Mm -hmm. he wasn't cursed, though, by this woman. So, that's that's at least good. But I was like, a forest, like, protector woman? We love that. Mm -hmm. It seems like she saved him, too. Yeah, both. Because she made sure she didn't shoot it. Yeah. Yeah, we love that. We love that. And I do know that I said that that was the last and final story, but I lied because I'm a liar. And Savannah has one more cute little cute one to end on. Yeah, I do have a, I have another one. Um, Okay. So this one, the person says that their dad told them this one. Perfect. So it says, one day when my dad was at home alone, he was going to eat some, um, one more thing before showering. He got some ulam which is food in filipino because it says their dad is filipino Mm -hmm. um and he began eating then there was a blackout (gasps) no so he got a candle and continued eating (laughs) me (laughs) (laughs) he saw something white to his right Uh -uh. he looked he looked to his right and saw nothing (gasps) he continued eating but it was still there uh uh-uh, uh and like, he got <laughs> he got a bit nervous and began eating faster. <laughs> okay. It was still there. He ate even faster. Okay. When my dad finished, he quickly put the bowl in the sink and looked in the mirror. He noticed there was a piece of rice stuck to his eye. You <laughs> <laughs> things are not always what they seem <laughs> things are absolutely not what they seem the fact that this man was so unbothered by this possible ghost that he was seeing that this man he's just going he said i'm gonna finish eating first okay but have you ever been that hungry where you're like i don't care but he he did keep going faster like honestly he was no. a little bit scared. like honestly no scared. if i thought i saw a ghost out of the corner of my eye i do not think i think i would lose my appetite immediately <laughs> well i don't know i, I don't love know. that I for probably, him though i yeah. love that for him um yeah. but my real question is like could he not feel it because i feel like i could feel if there was rice in my eye yeah i don't know i mean rice is small and that's true doesn't weigh a lot that so. is true that is so funny. Know. That's a good. It that's is. a good lighthearted one to end on because some yeah. of them were a little dark. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was a good one to end on. <laughs> we love that. I don't know. I thought this episode was so fun. I mm-hmm. love these little stories. But yeah. you guys send us your stories too because we love some good stories. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it would be cool to um, hear from the people who are actually listening to the show. So yes. that would be cool. Yes. So 
send us your stories. Our email and is below and, you know, obviously our Instagram and stuff. So all of that is linked below if you like to find it. And I don't know what the heck we're going to post on Instagram this week, but it's going to be really fun, whatever it is. So um, definitely go check that out. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can find a picture of a tall man. Ew. Yeah. Ew. It's going to be like Slender Man. Or <laughs> just a shot from the, the Truman Show. Or just a piece of rice. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> spoil All the th- episode without spoiling it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> All three of those. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny well go check us out on instagram and go rate and review us on apple Podcasts and spotify please Mm -hmm. and yeah i guess i don't really have anything else for you guys this week what about you savannah that is all okay well i guess we will see you guys next week cue the music